in the land of the Seminole. Oh, blow, blow, Seminole wind. Blow like you're never gonna blow again. You know what's amazing about Florida State last season? The fact that they got to 13-0, considering that at times Jameis Winston, you know, was inconsistent, despite the fact that, you know, Florida State was a turnover-prone team at times. And defensively, they had some issues stopping the run, and the turnover ratio was minus six for the year. Look, the year before when they won the national championship, it looked relatively easy compared to the success that they had in 2014. In 2013, they only got challenged twice that whole year, um, including Auburn in the national title game. But this past year, of their 13 wins, seven of them were by seven points or less. On one hand, you give them credit for finding ways to win and for uh, Jameis getting the job done. A lot of times they come from behind fashion. But also, too, that will set up a pattern for making us, the football fans, believe that eventually that's going to catch up to them and they're going to face a team where if they get behind, uh, they ain't going to be able to catch up. And that, of course, was the problem in the semifinal game um, against Oregon last year in Pasadena. As if that wasn't enough to deal with the 29-game winning streak coming to a halt despite winning their third straight ACC championship, Florida State has to enter this year replacing a lot of talent. 11 players NFL draft-wise, including five of them that went in the first and second round. So entering this year, quarterback obviously is going to be the, the big issue because Winston was such a winner um, for Florida State. Only lost one game in two years. Everett Golson hopes to fill in those shoes quite nicely. Of course, his experience at Notre Dame speaks for itself. A terrific 2012. Didn't see him in 2013 because of the academic, um, because of the cheating that happened. And he basically had to miss all of 2013. Last season, um, started off well, but didn't end the season on the note that he wanted to. And one of those losses was a heartbreaker at Florida State, coincidentally, in which he throws the winning touchdown pass. He appeared and offensive pass interference, wiped out the touchdown, and it simply uh, put wiped out the win for Notre Dame. They lost and would lose four more games after that. And Florida State would, of course, just keep on winning. Winston brings to Florida State his athleticism and, no question, a strong arm. But decision-making is going to be the big thing. Of the interceptions he threw last year, 10, four of them got returned for touchdowns. So he has to be a little bit smarter when it comes to throwing the ball. Dalvin Cook will, no question, be a major help for him running the ball as a freshman. Cook had over 1,000 yards. Receiving-wise, you do return Travis Rudolph and you return the Wilson kid. On the other hand, though, um, you do lose Rashad Green, who is so valuable, number one ACC receiver in receiving yards, All-American. Offensive line will be the biggest area where you have to make changes because you lost so much talent. Nick O'Leary, the number one tight end, is gone. He and three other offensive linemen from Florida State were all NFL draftees. So you do return, though, Roderick Johnson, 6'7", 312 pounds. He'll, no question, be the main guy on the offensive line. But again, he'll be surrounded by talent, not as experienced as him. Looking at the defense for Florida State, they got to patch up the defensive line with um, with the uh, now Lawrence Sample, and also too, uh, we'll see if, um, if guys like uh, you know DeAndre Walker and as well as uh, Derek Mitchell can step up for Florida State. If you're looking at the linebackers, probably not as much concern, provided that Reggie Northup. Um, has recovered from that ACL injury, um, the ACL that he tore against Oregon in the semifinal last year. Terrence Smith, his injury situation isn't quite as drastic. Had turf toe, though, and that hobbled him for spring, and you got to hope he's recovered from that. Secondary is going to be the biggest area of strength, I think, for the Seminoles, especially at corner. Jalen Ramsey is the best defensive back in the country. Him or, or Hargreaves from Florida, you have to say, is the other one. But uh, Ramsey can play any defensive back position. They're going to put him primarily, though, at the corner, that'll be his full-time spot because the safeties are solidified um, with both Tyler Hunter as well as uh, Nate Andrews. As far as kicking, don't have much to worry about here. The punter, he's a very uh, consistent one in case of Beatty. Kicker's one of the best in the country. The Lou Groza Award winner two years ago. He was a finalist last year as well. The reliable Roberto Aguayo. The schedule for Florida State really, to me, doesn't look that bad in the beginning. Uh, September, the lone scary game. If you want to call it scary, at Boston College. We went to a bowl game a year ago. It's a pretty long trip. The game will be on a Friday night, September 18th. But Boston College, um, they, they lose a lot of key players, too. In October, uh, you get a couple of uh, key games, but both at home with Miami and uh, Louisville. And it seems like lately when Miami comes to Florida State, Florida State handles them um, with ease. We'll see if that happens again this year. 
late October uh, through early November is the critical three-game stretch, and two of the games were on the road at Georgia Tech in a rematch of the ACC championship game, which was competitive. Home against Syracuse, that's a sandwich game. Got to watch out for that one because you play at Clemson the following week. Syracuse um, could be in one of those positions where Florida State may not be as focused on them because, of course, Georgia Tech the week before and at Clemson, which could decide the ACC Atlantic the week after. And they close out the year um, at Florida. And if Florida had an ounce of a field goal kicker in last year's game of Tallahassee, it would have been the Gators and not the Seminoles that would have won that game. And it would have been Baylor or TCU and not Florida State that would have gone to the college football playoff. But Florida State missed several makeable field goals in that close game at Tallahassee. I look for Florida State to, it's, it's close. I debated to put back and forth between Florida State and Clemson. Both lose a lot of key players. And I know Florida State's got some tough games. Clemson does too. I'm going to give the edge to Florida State. And I think that they will have time because um, many of their key games don't come until mid-late season. I think Florida State will have enough time to get the younger guys broken in. I do have the Seminoles. Close, but I have them winning the ACC Atlantic. But I do think overall Florida State misses out on the college football playoff. I think there's going to be a couple of games that get them. 10-2 and two is my uh, overall prediction for the Seminoles. That's my look at Florida State. Another preview coming soon. Thanks, everybody.